Hi, good morning, everybody. Today is the second live talk for Adrianio in regards of the Penjana Economic Recovery Plan. So let's start off with uh, just a very quick um, brief about our company, Adrianio. Actually, we are one-stop accounting center. They, we can cater and deliver the solutions to almost all the SME and micro enterprise. So we have about 80 staff and we have four branches throughout Malaysia. So if you are one of the SME of micro enterprise, then you're welcome. You visit our website or you can also live chat us. So our consultant will be very soon to uh, contact you. So let's start off with this Penjana economic recovery plan. First of all, the first topic then we need to address what Penjana announced is on the unemployment. So in order to address the rising unemployment rate, in Malaysia, so the government have many incentive and initiative in order, okay, it has already benefit about 2.4 million workers nationwide. The first thing we look at this wage subsidy program, I believe this is not very new to all, all of us because some of our clients and even though some of you have already claimed, make the application in the month of April, May and June. Then some of our clients, even they have already received the money, the subsidies for the month of April and May. So according to the Perkeso statistics, so far as as 20th of May, so they have received about 300 applications so far, and they have already approved about 94%. So how about the 6% that has been rejected? According to the per case statistics, they say why they rejected the cases because um, they give them the wrong business registration number, the first thing. The second reason is the company is a not active and dormant company because one of the conditions for the company to apply for this WSP is the active company. So if you're not active, of, of course, they cannot give you these subsidies. And then lately, some of our clients, even though in the Semakan, they say the, your application has been approved. But until end of June, uh, sorry, end of May, they still not re receive any payment yet. So a special task, task force has been uh, formed in order to address this delay payment. So what are the reasons for the delay payment? Again, this is uh, maybe the client key in the wrong <coughs> business registration number, the first thing. The second is the wrong bank account number. The third one is the wrong bank. Like maybe bank, public bank, then you rightly, you wrong rightly as public bank is not public, is not make bank. So for my clients, her cases is they key in the bank account wrongly. So the officer called her and asked her to go online and make the changes immediately. Then they have already processed the payment for our clients. <clears throat> Just a very quick briefing about this. What is the WSP program? So you are, if you are the businessman and you have about less than 75 staff, so you can claim 1,002 per person for three months on the conditions that the sal their salary must not more than 4,000. The second category, the second category is for the 76 to 200 staff. So you can claim $800 with the conditions that your sales must drop more than 50%. Then you have to prove to Pokeso. So the third category is if this is a business, they have 300 staff, but maximum they can claim is only 200 packs only, which the government will subsidy $600 per staff. And again, they need to provide the sales drop to show the per case there's a sales drop more than 50% in order to claim. <clears throat> so one of the conditions to fulfill to claim this WSP is the employers, they cannot have and implement the salary deduction for the staff. <coughs> so just now is WSP 2.0, 2.0 what? like what I have explained just now, but now under the Benjana announcement, so they have enhanced it and we, we call it as WSP 3.0. So what is the differences between the WSP 2.0 and 
So the WSD 3.0. So the government, if you have started, started to apply in the month of April, May and June. So by right June, this is the last month that you receive the subsidies from the current, uh, sorry, from the per case. So now the government, they will extend it for another three more months. July, August, July, August and September with the $600 subsidies per pack. And do you need to apply for this WSD 3.0? The answer is you no need to apply. It will be automatically granted by the per case law. But if you have any changes, you've got to log in and yeah, change it online. Edit your information online. And the other condition, this is a great news to the employers, is because the government now, they allow the employers to implement this so-called reduced work rate. So what does it mean here? That means like Adrienio maybe, or uh, Adrienio asked ask Cindy, I'm Cindy, ask me to work four days instead of five days in a week. So my bosses will deduct 20% of my salary. Or my boss will still ask me to come to work five days in a week, but they will have my pay cut of 20%. So the pay cut here cannot be more than 30%. The limit, maximum limit you can have the pay cut is 30% only. So this is the new guideline published in the Perkeso website on 5th June. It is the WSB 3.0. So for all the categories, you can claim $600 per month. And you can you are allowed to have a pay cut, not more than 30% for your staff. And you must register and contribute the per case on or before 1st April 2020. You cannot say, hey, why not I register and, and contribute now in the month of June? Then I start to claim in the month of July. No, so they will reject of your application. And then previously, the deadline of the application is until 15th of September only. Now, under the Bajana WSD 3.0, it has been extended up to 30th September 2020. If you apply, say, in the month of September, so it doesn't mean that you only receive one month subsidies only in the month of September. No, it doesn't mean like that. Meaning to say, if you apply your application in September, so you start start receiving the subsidies from September onwards for six months, which is September, October, November, December, January, until February next year. <coughs> okay, this is the WSP 3.0, and this one specially delivered to this tourism sector. And for those business who were not allowed to operate during the CNCO, so what are these business? For example, like the amusement park, Legoland, theme park, massage center, karaoke, uh, cinema, entertainment center. So all these things, if you're not allowed to open, to operate during the CNCO, and the employers have put their staff into the unpaid leave, they still can apply this WSP of $600 per month, but on the conditions that the fund must go direct to the employees. So the differences between just now, <clears throat> the money, this is a subsidized to the employers. But now this one is applicable to the tourism sectors and business prohibited. So the money will go to your employees. But the employer, you still need to apply on behalf of your employees. So when the PECESO bank in the money into your bank accounts, so within seven days, you need to remit the payment back to your employees. So this is another, just now, all the WSP are under the PERCASO and EIS scheme. So there is also another training allowances is given under the EIS scheme. So the training allowances up to 4,000 for the individuals, and this one not for the employer, for the individuals will also be extended to those who do not, who retrench but does not cover under the EIS scheme. So EIS scheme, who should apply EIS scheme? <clears throat> the workers at the age of 18 until 60 years old, you have to apply for the EIS scheme. And normally the contribution of EIS scheme is only 
of your monthly salary and the employer and employees both you have to contribute and how does it work for the EIS scheme here so EIS scheme will not cover those who resign voluntary like I resigned today can I get the training allowances from the EIS scheme because I lost my job no you cannot get this benefit from the EIS scheme so EIS scheme only cover those like uh, you has been retrenched by your employer or your company that you're working on with has already closed down. So they have, they're forced to retrench you or lay off you. Or you're under the VSS scheme or you are under the constructive dismissal or sex, sexual harassment or you ask to perform a very dangerous job that you can't even perform. So under this kind of scenario, then you can apply for the EIS scheme and apply for these training allowances. Actually, if you feel free, you can always talk into this EIS and see what are the benefits they provide for the retrenched workers. There are many categories and benefits. They have about four to five categories. Then you can uh, explore more from there. Okay. Another benefit is called hiring and training benefits for the business. We also call it as place to train, also given by the DIS. So this is the government also introduced many hiring schemes in order to encourage the employers to hire those uh, unemployment workers like the graduates, school leavers and OKU. So this application is only applicable from mid-June this year until end of the year, 31st December 2020. And it's focused to three categories. The first category is the government, okay, if you have any intention to get a new start, this is a good, very good bonus to the employers. Anyhow, by hope or by code, you also need to get a new start. Like you're getting the fresh grass. Then the government will subsidize you $600 per month for six months. If you're getting uh, the employment workers, not the fresh grad, but below 40 years old, they will give you even more, $800 per month for six months. And unemployment workers for 40 years old and above, or okay you, then you're entitled for $1,000 per month for six months. So if you have any vacancy, then you may consider you can apply under this scheme. So how to apply? Actually, we have uh, we just applied for our company last two days. Actually, it's uh, quite pretty simple. So what you need to do is the, the staff, the job seeker and the employers both have to go and register under this website. www.myfuturejobs.gov.my then after you register, then you have to contribute the SOCSOR and EIS for your staff. Then you go to this assist the CASO and contribute within 30 days that your staff report to work. So after you contribute, because they start to open, they already open for the registration, start from 15 June this month. But the application will be, they will, you can allow to apply it from 1st July, which is next month only. Then the, at last, you need to go to benjanakajaya.pakeso.gov.my. This is the website, then you can search the suitable course for your staff. So these are the two websites that you need to register. We actually, our company, Adrian Yo, we have registered last two days for our new uh, staff who joined us uh, in the middle of the June or end of the June. But we found out that this system, this scheme is not entitled for those employees that you have already claimed ERP and WS3. Remember just now, you can claim $600 for six months. So if you claim this WSP for your employees, so you cannot claim this hiring incentive of $600 from the per case. It is mutually exclusively. So you have to decide which incentive you want to claim. So I would say this scheme is only suitable for those salary who have those staff, they have salary more than 4000 Because 4000 you cannot claim for the WSP, then you may opt for this scheme, hiring incentive. So 
So what are the conditions to claim this? So you have to ensure at least they are unemployed for at least two months, but except for the fresh graduates, then they are below 60 years old because the EIS only cover up to 60 years old. And then not applicable if you are claiming under the WSP or ERP scheme. The next one, uh, you must, okay, furnish them a, a contract which is about one year contract. Meaning to say the trainees who work for you for three months, six months, is not eligible to claim for this, this uh, scheme. And most important is please remember and assure that your HR manager contribute the SOCSOR and EIS for this stuff. Okay, this one is further deduction, further incentive. Once you claim the hiring incentive, then the government, the EP, uh, the SOCSOR, they will offer you another mobility assistance. But this one is the subsidies to your staff, not to the employer. Okay, to your staff. So how does it work? You have to ask your staff where they are coming from, where is their hometown. So this one, if their hometown is uh, one day, uh, is more than 100 km to the office, then they can claim for this $600. So 100 km, sometimes you tend to think, hey, how to calculate the 100 km? I cannot picture it, how far is the 100 km? I can just give you a few examples here, like the KL Kuala Lumpur to Ipoh, it takes about 197 km. It will take the long journey, the journey will take us about two hours drive. So from Petaling Jaya to Songkai, Songkai is very near to Bido, which is my hometown, it's 108 km. So your staff, if your staff come from Songkai, then she or he can claim this $600, one off payment. And then if they need to fly here to work, to report to work, means they are coming here from Sabah and Sarawak, then they are entitled for 1,001 of payment. So this is a very good scheme. On top of just now $600 for six months, plus the $600 one off to the employees. All these are under the Perkeso and EIS scheme. So now we move to this HRDF, nothing to do with Perkeso and EIS. HRDF stands for Human Resources Development Fund. This scheme called Reskilling and Upskill Programs. So they will provide you matching grants up to 5,000 per pax. This is the courses approved based on the JV proposal between the training providers and the employers on the cost offered to the trainees. Okay, this scheme is an initiative to provide the employment opportunities and trainings to all the Malaysian, Malaysian only, uh, unemployed graduates and school leaders. So this one is to equip them with the industry set of skills. It can be different set of skills and it can be the same skill in order to them to get ready to work while they are on the training. So how does it work here? Okay, let's say for example, Adrian Young, we have registered, we are the HRDF registered trainer. So you may, okay, if you have one new staff, then the staff is pretty new. You want them to, you want your staff, let's say our clients, ABC Sanyam Perhat. This ABC Sanyam Perhat, they have one new staff. They ask, hey, they talk to us. They say, can you train to my new staff, three or four staff? So I need you to train them to become, a, they know how to do the accounts, full set, uh, a little bit of tax planning, the report management, yeah. And then uh, how to uh, bring my accounts to the cloud or this. So we package it to you. Then we package it in a training and send a, a write a proposal to you. So Adrian Yo and ABC is the number hard, both of us. So we need to see, to go and meet up with the HRDF committee members. And we will present our proposal in the meeting. So upon the approval, then we will train them. So after we train your staff, after we train your staff, then you have to issue a contract, you know, to your staff to bind your staff for 12 months. That means this is called commitment letters. So you have to say, I must hire you at least 12 months. And then who pay the fees? For the ABCs and Young Berhad, they no need to pay the fees. If the training cost is 6,000 per person, so ABCs and Young Berhad, they pay, Adrian, you pay us 1,000. 
Okay, the 5,000 will paid by HRDF. Isn't it very good? So if you have this uh, planning in mind, you are welcome to contact us or our consultant. Then we can design a program for your son. So what are the targeted groups here? So we targeted for three groups. Also the same. It's referred to unemployment graduates. Okay. And then the school leavers and the retrenched workers. One-to-one -one matching grants is if you spend 4000 on the training, so the HRDF will subsidize you 4000 you spend 6,000, the HRDF, they will subsidize you 5,000 because it's maximum. So 1,000 have to pay by the employers. So when are you going to propose this one? They give you a very limited time, which is start from 1st June until 30th June this month. So if, if your intent, you want to get your staff to be trained, or you want to register as a HRDF uh, registered trainer, so you have to submit your proposal by end of this month. So now we move on to the highlights for the companies. Okay, the first one is the tax deduction for COVID-19 related expenses. As you know, especially the construction industry, so there's a lot of SOP. They need to in compliances before they really can start to work, even though after the CMCO. Like the construction industry, they need to send all their site workers to the uh, COVID-19 swap test before they put them back into the work. So the swap test will cost you about $350 to $650 per test, depending on the volume that you're going to take. Okay, so this swap test expenses is uh, tax deductible. And how about you buy your mask for your staff and uh, you buy the hand sanitizer, sanitize your offices, office before you start work, all these will be given the tax deductions. Some of them you may buy the thermal scanner, then you can claim for the capital allowances. So when can you start to claim? Actually, you can claim immediately. Hmm? Another one is the renovation. Generally, renovation cost is not tax deductible and you cannot claim for capital allowances because the renovation cost will be deductible against the real property gain tax against when you dispose of your properties. So what are the, these uh, expenses of the renovation? Like you, you do hacking, you do wiring and electricity. Uh, you want to change all your tiles to the timber flooring. All these are renovation costs. So you cannot get any deduction generally, but now, under the steel millage package 2020, so they allow you to claim this renovation. Since when? Whatever expenses, renovation expenses that you incurred on 1st April until 31st December 2020, you will get a special tax deduction up to 300000 This is very good because the special tax deduction is not like capital allowances. Special tax deduction means that you can finish claiming within the year that you have incurred, providing you have sufficient chargeable income to offset you. Now, under the Benjana, it has already been extended up to 31st December 2021. So for those businessmen, you have the intention want to renovate of your premises, your premises, not your house, yeah? your premises, then you may consider whether you want to renovate this year or next year. Anyhow, they give you two, two years of assessment to claim for this renovation. But my question is, um, they say 300,000 is referred for one year. One year you can claim 300,000 or two years in total you can claim 300,000. So the guideline is not, uh, is not coming out yet. So we still need to wait for the guidelines to come up. Then we can give you a further up updates on it. SEA of ICT equipment. ICT equipment are refers to the access control system, card readers, your server, CPU, printers, scanner computers, and etc. Generally, SEA, you can claim when you first buy, you can claim IA, initial allowances of 20%, AA of 10%. Then you need to take a subsequent year, you can claim 10%, 10% every year. 
So under this scenario, you need to take eight years to finish claiming of your capital allowances. But under this Punjab uh, economic package, then they allow you to claim ACA. That means the faster way for you to enjoy of your tax uh, CA capital allowances. First year is 20 and annual allowances is 40. And the second year you can claim 40%. Meaning to say you just need to take two years to finish to claim all these capital allowances. So it has already been extended up to next year, 31st December 2021. So I believe, especially after the COVID-19, most of the business, they have the intention in mind, hey, I need to upgrade my server. Hey, I need to upgrade of my staff computers. Or I need instead of desktop, because they can work from home anywhere, anytime. So this is the best time for you to invest in your ICT equipment. Some of you may get the grant from the government, from the ICT equipment. At the same time, you will get the tax incentive like ACA on the ICT equipment purchase. Well, this is a hot topic and we used to ask by our clients, renter. So now the government under this scheme, the government, they offer this tax deduction to the landlord, to those landlord who give the discount or the waiver of the renter offer to the SME tenants. So the only the conditions are you must rent it to the SME tenants. SME tenants and you must rent the premises used by the tenants for the business purposes. Means like the shop rod, retail, shopping mall, then you will get the deduction. How about your tenant is um, used for the own stay, own stay, not for the business purposes. Then you're not allowed to get a deduction. Then you must give, cannot be too stingy. So you must give at least 30% discount on your gross rental. And then this special deduction has been extended for another three months because initially it's from April, May, and June only. Now it's extended from July up to September. So there's a new, new guidelines on these uh, documents required for rental doc deductions. This one, the new guidelines refer here, just published on 15 June. They say the tenants must get the SME certificate from the SME corporation. So how you're going to apply this SME cert, then you can click into this website and apply and give it to your landlord in order for the landlord to enjoy this tax deduction. This is a pretty new. So if you want to ask for the tax, uh, rental discount, yes, but equip yourself with the SME cert first from the SME corporation. Another documents you need to keep is, uh, of course, you need to valid tenancy agreements, documents, the rental income statement, uh, the details of your bank, uh, business registration and tax file number, and details of how much rental you for the deduction, whether you deduct 30%, 50%, or waive 100% deduction. These are the details that income tax require in order to support for your tax deduction. When they come for the tax audit, they will ask all these documents. Okay, they will verify all these documents. If you cannot provide them the, all these documents, they will treat as a, they will not allow you to get a deduction on this. So the definition of the SME Corp. So you will, by this definition, you will know whether your, you are, your company is a SME or not a SME. If you are manufacturing companies, if your turnover is less than 50 million and you have less than 200 staff here, then you are considered as SME. But if you are the service or other sectors like Adrenio, we are accounting service, we are the professional. If your turnover is less than 20 million or you have staff less than 75, you are also considered as SME. So this is a scenario for how you calculate the rental deductions here. Okay, the COVID the number hut is an investment holding company and they have monthly rental income 10,000 for a factory. And these uh, landlord, they are very kind hearted. They give 50% discount for three months from April up to June. What does it mean here qualified? Qualified means here is qualified for tax deduction. 
because minimum discount is 30 percent so this three months you are qualified for tax deduction and the next three months the landlord only give 20 percent discount and it says not qualified here okay you cannot enjoy the tax deduction so what is the tax impact here if you receive your re yearly rental receipt in full you are getting 120,000. But after the discounted rental, you give a total discount of 21,000. Okay, let's see how it, the calculations here. If we do the special deductions here, so you, your net rental income is 99,000. So you will not get any rental deduction. So the tax you need to pay at 24% yeah, is 23,760. But with the special deduction then can you see that you can deduct another special rental deduction of 15 percent then the rental the tax payable you need to pay only twenty thousand. then how much is your tax savings your tax saving is three thousand six here with under this scheme but the question is they say you might ask hey hi cindy why you times tax rate of 24 percent not 17 percent I thought uh, this is a pretty small company and they fulfill the SME definition. But uh, IRB just issued the public practice note on the 3rd of 2020 on 18 May. It says any investment holding companies, if you do not have business income, you only have the rental interest and dividend income. So you are not fall within the categories of SME anymore in year 2020, meaning to say your tax rate will be 24%. So this is a, a bit shocking to us, especially for the investment holding companies. Meaning to say your rental income will be taxed, your net rental income will be taxed at 24% in year 2020 onwards. So here are the list of the expenses you can deduct against your rental income. Turn loan interest, repair and maintenance, Agent commissions. Agent commissions here refer to the renewal tendency agreement. It's not for the initial uh, agent commission. Management fees and insurance also. Okay, let's move on to the income tax rebate for new business. <clears throat> this is a uh, good news, but we haven't get any details announcement from the income tax yet. Okay, income tax, they offer you income tax rebate up to three years. 20,000 per year, up to three years. This is a tax rebate. And it's only applicable for those SME who are registered and commence the operation from 1st July. That means if you have intention, you want to incorporate a company, please hold first. Okay, you have to wait until 1st July. Then only you can claim, you can entitle for this um, tax rebate of 20,000 per year. So any incorp Sanyam Berhad, any incorporation start from 1st July this year up to 31st December next year, then you entitle for the tax rebate. So um, I have a question here. Because um, there's no clear guidelines, there's uh, many uncertainties about this tax rebate. The first thing is, is it applicable to all the businesses, include the sole proprietor, partnerships and LLPs, or just in their Berhad only? We don't know. And then, any terms and conditions apply? How about related company transaction? I can incorporate a company in July, my related company, then I can pass all my profit to my related company. Am I still eligible for this 20,000 tax rebate or not? And then is it applicable to all the industry, including the investment holding companies? If yes, then I will incorporate more investment holding companies after July. So this is the, 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 the doubt that we're going to uh, find out more from the IRB. This is a uh, woo. That means the government going to woo, wing for the FTI, foreign companies, to shift the business to Malaysia. So the government is dishing out many tax incentives and reinvestment allowances to add, attract the foreign direct investment. So what are the tax incentives offered by our government? The first thing is the zero tax rate. That means 
for those new foreign companies that invest in Malaysia, they no need to pay tax, zero tax rate for 10 years. On the conditions that they need to invest minimum 300 million to 500 million, the initial capital investment. The second incentive is 0% for 15 years. That means your capital investment must be more than 500 million. The third one is 100% on the ITA investment tax allowances for five years. And again, the same. For those existing companies relocating the expenses overseas facilities to Malaysia with the investment above 300 million. Say, okay, if you are the company, then you own a factory in Malaysia. And at the same time, you own another factory in Singapore. And because of this tax incentive, so your boss may consider you want to relocate of your Singapore factory back to Malaysia factory, and then you want to expand of your Malaysia business in order to claim for, claim for this incentive, 300 million. Another one is the special reinvestment allowances, only applicable for those manufacturing and selected agriculture activities only. But this one only uh, applicable for two years, which is year YA2020 and YA2021. Flexible working arrangement. After the COVID-19, uh, we really realized how important that we can work from home because during the COVID-19, all of us, because we have the server, so we can also continue and work from home. So every one of us. So this is a very important. So this is for those employers implementing the flexible work arrangement that are satisfied the necessary requirement, they will get a further tax deduction. But however, as I now, it is also uncertain of what type of the tax deduction will be uh, enjoined by the company. So we have to wait and see. Or we don't know yet. So now we move on to the impact for individuals. Impact for individuals. Under this first column, income tax exemption of 5,000. If your boss, they think that hey, you shouldn't use desktop, they will buy you a new notebook in order for you to work from home. So you will get a tax. And this new, new notebook is supposed to be taxed on your personal tax under the prerequisite. So now they give you the tax exemption up to 5,000. If the value of the notebook is 6,000, so personally, you still liable to tax of 1,000. But if the new notebook value is 4,000, then you are be fully exempted. Okay, this one um, immediately from 1st July 2020. Okay, this is the incentive is, just now is the boss buy you the laptop, handphone or tablet. But this one is you buy your own from your own pocket, your own money, okay, on your handphone, notebook, and tablets. Then this is a special tax relief, okay, on top of the lifestyle relief. Because the lifestyle relief, yeah, you see, my colleagues can claim she just bought the new uh, iPad. Yeah. So the lifestyle relief is cover books and magazines, the computer, smartphone, if you use to go to gym, gym subscription, internet subscription. So, but allow you to claim maximum 2005 only. So, but if in under this situation, if you want to, you already bought one computer for yourself, then you can claim extra 2005. Then in total, you can claim 5,000. Huh? Let's move on to childcare subsidy. This is only applicable for those families who have children. Who have children, huh? childcare subsidies. Okay, the first item, the first incentive is referred to the individuals. If you have put your nanny or childcare services online, then you are entitled for this e-voucher of $800 per household. Per household is one family. If you have four children, you still get $800. If you have 10 children, you still get $800 because it only limit to $800 per household. So you can utilize this $800 and pay to reduce of your childcare fees. That means you can subsidize of your childcare costs. 
And this one can be utilized now until end of August. So you still have two and a half months to enjoy this one. Please go to this website, yeah. And you go to this website, yeah, to check whether can you claim this voucher or not. Eight hundred dollars. This is not very new, uh, because already been implemented in other countries like UK, but Malaysia. I think we should, uh, yeah, take advantages of these subsidies. Uh, yeah. I, I cannot enjoy this one because my children already grew up. Yes. And then the second item is the tax relief increased to 2000, 3000. If you send your kids to the registered kindergarten that fulfill the requirement, they register under the social welfare, then in year 2019, you can get a deduction of 2000. But in year 2020 and 2021, you will get the tax relief of 3000. This is also applicable to per household. You can choose whether claim by your husband or claim by yourself or by the wife. Depends on who has a higher income. Okay, so you enjoy max of the tax uh, incentive here. The third one, the first and second is the incentive, the cash handout to the individuals and tax relief to the individuals. The third item, the item number three, this is a grant offered to the childcare center. With, who register with the Ministry of Women, Family and Community Development. So the childcare, they may apply this grant. And let, let's look at the government grants here. This is the Micros and SME. In short, we call MSME e-commerce campaign. So e-commerce campaign, this is eligible for those SME and micro enterprise that will be onboarded into the e-commerce towards the business digitalization. So this is a call funded by the government and the MTech. So it will provide the training, what kind of training they will provide, like the onboard training, seller subsidies, sales support. But if you want to know more about this scheme, then you are feel free to visit this website, MTech website. So last two days, I'm trying to register myself. I went to the MTech website and register myself. So when you register, then you are required to key in of your personal profile, then your company profile. Then inside there, you'll find, wow, they, or they really offer many different types of the courses. You can see here, e dagang, okay? And then copywriting, content writing, how you're going to write. And then how are you going to turn your business, digitalize of your business? And even though they teach you, how you're going to launch of your Instagram. All these are free. So you may visit to the MTEC website to learn more about this. How are you going to tap into all these courses offered by them? Next night, we move to the technical and digital adoption for the SME and MTC. The first thing, this is a fund, yeah? a loan, SME Technology Transformation Fund. They offer up to 500 million loan. The second one, this is a grant, smart automation grant. Okay, 100 million allocated, but the cap it at 1 million per company only. Okay, this is not very new. Digitalization matching grant. It, you can claim up to 50% of your invoice amount or maximum 5,000. This one has already been started in this year, February, February until now. So it's cater focus for these five areas. If you are the company, you want to buy the, like the cloud accounting like zero, then you will fall under this category, accounting tax and ERP. Okay, so you can purchase the zero with the 50% subsidized or up to maximum 5,000 for free. Yes, but of course you need to purchase from the register panel panel registered and approved by the MTech only. And we are the Adrenio, we are the approved panel. If you are thinking you want to buy or upgrade any software or buy any cloud accounting system, then you are welcome to uh, visit us and to give us a call on this in order to get the 50% subsidies or up to a maximum of 5,000. That's really a lot. Yeah, if you want to turn your system like the restaurant into the EPO system, you may utilize these grants also. And this grant only up limit to 100,000 
uh, Sanyang Berhad ini. So you have to apply as soon as possible. So what are the conditions? The first condition, you must be Malaysian owned for 60%. Of course, you have to register with the SSM, ROP or ROC. And then the company must be operation at least one year. And your annual sales must be minimum uh, 100,000. If you have been operated one year, then it's 100,000 for one year or two years, that add in together accumulatively is 100,000 for two years, which is about 50,000 per year. So bear in mind, you cannot simply buy all these uh, software or EPO system or HR cloud, HR payroll system from any person, but you must purchase from the authorized vendor. So you can see who are the vendor from the MTEP website. So now let's move on to the loan. So the first one we call Benjana SME Financing Loan. In short, we call PSF. This loan is only applicable for those SME adversely impacted by COVID-19. So the interest rate is very low, 3.5%. Maximum is 500,000 per SME. Another loan is applicable for the tourism financing. So it will be, they have a allocation of 1 billion for this. So they will open and you can start to apply in July. In next month only you can apply for this loan. And that one is for the microfinancing loan for the uh, micro enterprise. Allocation of 400 million. Maximum per company you can apply is 50,000 per company with the interest rate of 3.5%. So out of this 400 million, 50 million is allocated for women entrepreneurs. So here we have a list now and make a summary of the loan that we feel is good. Then you can refer what is the known type of the loan, the quantum maximum, how much you can apply, the interest rate. <coughs> and then most importantly is we have furnished you the link. Where can you find more information and the details? Where can you submit your loan? Okay, these are the summary of the loan. <coughs> now is the SST. <coughs> there is a SST 50% remission on the penalty from 1st July to 30th September 2020. Three months, July, August, and September. But this one, some of the my friend, my colleagues asked me, hey, if I make default the payment in last year, December 2019, but I make the payment in July, and I am entitled for the 50% SST penalty or not, 50% discount or not. So the answer is no. So this is <coughs> referred to the due date. It falls between July and September, and you make a default on it, then you're entitled for 50% remission. <coughs> and how's the SST penalties looks like? Okay, if your default in payment or late filing for the first 30 days and title, they will impose 10% penalty. For the next 30 days, <coughs> they will impose another 15%. For the above 90 days, they will impose another 15%. So the maximum penalty is 40%, which is 10 plus 15 plus 15. <coughs> Still sex exemption. The automotive sector is also given the still sex exemption, 100% or 50%. If you purchase the local assembly car, you will enjoy the 100% still sex exemption. If you purchase the fully imported car, you only can enjoy 50% still sex deduction only. So this is also a good time if you want to change your car. But this one is only applicable from mid-June, 15 June until end of this year, 31st December 2020. Maybe your husband buy you a Christmas, Christmas present for a car, then you may consider for it. Okay. So, but the car value will not drop a lot because the sales tax is 10%. percent you will not drop by 10%. So averaging, it will drop. If you purchase the uh, local assembly car, it will drop between 5 to 7%. If you purchase a fully imported car, the price will reduce by 3 to 4%. Because why? Because the 
car purchase price, the big part of the cost already goes into the excise duty and import duty. And these two taxes remain unchanged. Okay, let's have a <clears throat> quick look on the car. Okay, how much savings you can save for all these car models? If you want to buy the Proton X70, X70, how much on the road? I think X70 is about 100,000 on the road, but you can save up to 5,000, means you save 5%. For the Honda HRV, it's about 110,000 on the road, but you only can save 4%, uh, 4,000, which is about 3.5%. If you wanted to buy the MERS E12-200, it will cost you 320000 But how much can you save? You save about 14000 about 4.4%. Oh, so these are the snapshot of how much you can save for some of the car models. Property sectors. Okay, just this is the bird eye view of the grants on the incentive for the property sectors. First thing, they lift the 70% financing from the third properties. Second thing, they have an RPGT exemption for the residential property, but limit to three units only. Third one is stamp duty exemption. And third, the fourth one is HOC. Okay, HOC, in short, we call Home Ownership Campaign 2020. For those property home buyer and the property investor, who has already missed the HOC 2019, now you can take advantages on this HOC 2020. Because I don't know, I, I don't care what is the HOC, but now I realize this is pretty good. Because the HOC in year 2019 uh, just started, it already generated about 23 billion sales, you know, 23 billion sales from the HOC which already were surplus by the surplus by the government target. Government only targeted 17, 17 billion sales, but eventually actually it will generate 23 billion sales. So this is very good, especially for the first time home buyer or for those person who intend to buy a new house for the homestay. So how does it work for the HOC? If you purchase a house, first thing, what are the costs that you need to incur? Of course, it's a 10% down payment. Secondly, is the legal fees. Legal fees in the SP. And third one is the stamp duty on the MOT. MOT meaning to say transfer the name from the developer to your personal name. This is an MOT, stamp duty on MOT. And then you will get the 90% term loan. Then you will get another lawyer. You will incur the legal fees plus the stamp duty on your loan agreement. So the under the HOC scheme, you will get the full exemption on your loan agreement. An exemption up to 1 million of residential properties value. If you purchase a property worth 600,000, meaning to say you are same duty exemption for both, for your loan agreement and for your MOT. So what are the conditions to fulfill? Of course, this is only applicable to the residential properties, not applicable for your shop or your factory for the land. So residential properties means here you can refer to the condominium, your bank, bungalow, cluster house and semi-dis and double story house. So the value got to be 300,000 to 2.5 million. And now the SMP must be signed and stamped, okay, from 1st June 2020 until 31st May 2021. You have one year to look for your new dream house. So please act now and look for your new dream house. Okay, so you must, this is only applicable for the new market. You must sign the SP with the property developer and the developer will, they have to promise to give you 10% discount. Okay, let's see how it works. Who eligible for the HOT? For sure, it has to be registered properties with the title. And you have to purchase from those developers who are registered with this HOC scheme. Secondly, it's a residential house. Third one, the buyer must be Malaysian citizens. SMP must be signed from 1st June this year until 31st May next year. So this is the schedule of the stamp duty, the, uh, the rate of the stamp duty rate. And then let's see. This is an example. How can you benefit from the HOC? 
let's say okay you buy a property value as 400,000 and the loan of amount is 90% finance you know so so how much is the down payment you need to uh, fork out so the down payment is 40% plus the stamp duty on loan stamp duty on MOT and plus your first loan installment in order to purchase a 400,000 house you your initial cash you need about 50,000 to purchase the 400,000 house if without any NOC scheme it's not if you purchase not under the HOC scheme. But if you purchase the under the HOC scheme, the first 10% down payment will be discounted by the developer. You don't need to pay 10% at all. And your stamp duty for loan and NOT is waived. So what you need to pay? Actually, you just need to pay the first loan installment, which is pretty low. It's about 1,007 only. Compared to just now, you need to pay 50,500. Especially for those who are late 20 years old. So I think I doubt they have the savings of 50000 Unless they get the money from their parents, for their mommy and from their daddies. Okay, this is the RPGT. RPGT exemption. So the residential owners and the property investor residential owner and property investor if you are looking out to cash out of your property value i think this one will be additional motivation for you to sell your properties and the potential buyer will have a better room to bargain with the seller because the seller in the sub sale market because the seller okay let's say for example this is an rpgt exemption applicable for the residential homes per individuals but up to three units. That means from now, 1st June, until next year, December, you sell your residential house. You no need to pay any RPGT. It's exempted. Okay, for example, if you buy the SS2 double story house 30 years ago, so the purchase price was uh, 100,000 only 30 years ago, but now the market value is 1 million. So you want to sell it. So how much is your capital gain. So your capital gain is 900,000 times 5% RPGT. You still need to pay 45,000. So if you have three units of SS2 double story house, then you can save during this period if you dispose it, you can save 135,000. One unit, you save 45,000. Three units, you save 135,000. So 45,000, can you offer a cheaper price to the potential buyer? Maybe you save 45, then you offer 20,000 cheaper or 30,000 cheaper to your buyer. So this is a very good planning, tax planning during this time if you want to sell off your property or restructure of your property portfolio at all. Okay, this is the uplift of 70% margin financing. Do you know that the Bank Nagara has reduced our uh, interest rate, lending interest rate three times? in this year the first time was in um, january 2020 reduced by 25 basis point second time in march 25 percent 25 basis point and third time in may 50 percent basis point so equivalent is has been reduced by one percent one percent so the the property investor now the interest rate is very low, especially the property investor. You can now look at the higher leverage of 90% loans compared to previous limitation of 70% margin of financing. You can buy more. So the 70% uplift is only applicable to the residential properties. Okay, value at 600,000 and above only. And during the HOC period, the 1st June 2020 until 31st May 2020. This one is only applicable. Because some sayings and research, they say the government should give more incentive on the sub sales market instead of the new market from the developer. Because the sub sales market, they have already um, and, 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 okay, included about 80% of the real estate transaction during the year. So at last is the tourism sector. Tourism sectors, 
The, this one, they waive the tourism tax exemption, which is cost about $10 per night stay at the hotel. Okay, so this one is very, okay, immediately start from 1st July 2020 until 30th June next year. These tourism sectors, <coughs> not applicable to the tourism related sectors, huh? only tourism sectors which refer to the hotel, travel agency and airlines. <coughs> and this is also service tax exemption from 1st March this year until next year 30th June. Then at last, because now we encourage for the 2020 Malaysia, it's a very cheap of all the travel package uh, in Malaysia. So you may claim the tax relief up to 1,000 individual taxpayer. Means your husband, you can claim 1,000. Yourself, you can claim 1,000. Or your wife, you can claim 1,000. But this one is only applicable for the accommodation and the entrance fee. If you go to Legoland, so please keep the ticket in order for you to claim. So this one effectively is from 1st June 2020 until 31st December 2021. So I end my presentation here. Thank you very much for participating in our live uh, show, live talk. So any things you can call for Cindy or any. Yeah, so our email address and feel free to visit our Adrian Yo website, www.adrianyo.com. Okay, I end my presentation here. Thank you very much and hope to see you soon. Thank you. So any questions? Any questions? Now, anyone got any questions? Hi, Joyce. Oh, can we have your slide? Okay, please sign up for our newsletter. But how to sign up for our newsletter? Yeah, please visit our website, www.adrenio.com and sign up for our newsletter. Then we will send you the slide copy. Okay, any more? So we will send the copy in the PDF file to you, to all of you. Any more questions from the Facebook or from the Zoom? What is the mobile childcare services? Actually, the details is not coming up yet. So I'm just, I'm still searching yesterday, but there's a link for you just now. Yeah, there's a link for you to study more because it says if you book your nanny or childcare services online, then you can apply for this $800 childcare services and you can use to offset of your childcare fees. So yeah, this is the thing. No, childcare services, you can refer to the website. The second question is tourism tax relief terms and conditions. Actually, there's no term, not a specific terms and condition. As long as you are the Malaysian citizen and then you keep the bills, like only the uh, hotel things, the communication and the um, uh, entrance fees is allowed for the deduction up to a maximum of 1,000 per year. So you can both yourself and the husband also can claim. Okay, this question is from Terence. Terence says, if I sold all my properties and now I buy a new one, does it count a new purchase? Uh, yes, it's considered as new purchase, but the new one you purchase from the sub-sale market or from the developer. If from the developer, you have to check with the developer is your property is under the HOC scheme. 2020. If this property is under HOC scheme, then you tend to save a lot, uh, especially the stand duties for the properties.
uh, Terence, did I answer you from developer? So you have to check with developer whether this the property that you purchase is under HOC or not. Because it's not all the developer they participate in the HOC scheme. So only those developer they participating in HOC scheme, then you are entitled to enjoy this incentive. Great to see all of you here. Yeah, and then Stephen. Stephen asked about upskill. Uh, yeah, Stephen asked about the upskill uh, training. Yeah, uh, on the upskill training. Okay, so what is your question, Stephen? Can you can can you write a bit clearer on your question? Explain more. Yeah, Stephen say on the upskill training by per case so. So did the employer need to list the potential employees together in the website? Because you no need to list. When you get the approval, only you choose the staff. Who, who are the staff you want to send to for the training? You no need to list in the website. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Ina, Ina say hiring and training means the employer able to claim if he hire one of three categories. Yes, you're right. Uh, yes, you're right, Ina. But bear in mind, they need to be unemployed at least two months unless the fresh graduates and there's a terms and conditions to fulfill it. Any more questions? Thanks, Steven. Thanks, Terence. Thank you, Fast. So I open up for the Q&A session for another five more minutes. So if not, uh, I will close today presentations and hope to see you soon in next time. Okay, so bye-bye to everyone. Thank you and see you soon. Bye.